Well, good morning. We had quite a rain, amen? It's good to see those of you who are here today, and we pray for those who cannot be here. If you have your Bibles, open them up to the book of Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. Uh, I want to talk to you today on a subject that uh, it may seem a little odd, uh, but I want to talk to you about being a warrior. I want to talk to you about taking a stand. I want to talk to you about uh, doing the things that we should do and being aggressive as we do them. And I know that uh, this may not uh, come across as maybe as well as I would like it to, but I hope you'll listen to it, I hope you'll evaluate it, and I hope you'll apply it. Uh, I was asked by a single mother once, her son was being bullied, and she asked me, she said, well, what do I do? I said, well, do you tell him the things that you, sh you should do? Uh, tell him to uh, be kind, to, uh, to tell his teacher, tell him to uh, uh, walk away, tell him uh, not to uh, participate in the same activity, just tell him to, uh, to move on. And she said, well, he's done all of those things. We, we've taken it to the proper sources and authorities, and it keeps happening. She said, what should I do? And I gave her this advice. I said, the next time that that young man does that, he needs to stand up for himself. He needs to not be pushed around or pushed down. He needs to take a stand. Because if you don't take a stand at some point in your life, then you'll fall for anything. And if you don't stand as a young man, if you don't stand for what you believe, and if you don't take that stand, there's going to come times in your life that you won't stand for your wife, you won't stand for your children, you won't stand for your church, you won't stand for the government, you won't stand for what's true. You will just simply fall or back up from any conflict. And I want you to know, there comes a time that you have to take a stand. You have to draw a line in the sand and say, I will not be pushed any further. I will not go backward anymore. Here I stand, and that's where I am. Now, with that said, I want you to stand. I want to read a passage of Scripture to you. And we'll have two translations there, the New King James and the NIV. And, of course, this is Moses, and they just crossed the Red Sea, and they are singing a psalm. And in the New King James Version, it said, The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. But in the NIV, it uses this word for a man of war. It said, The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. He's a warrior. Now, I want you to hear that, and I want you to think about that as we talk through this today. Let us bow. Father, I pray that your word would find lodging in our hearts today. I pray that you would just simply allow us to understand your truth. I pray that the men in this congregation, the young men, uh, would take a stand for their families, for their faith, for their life, for their nation, for what's true and what's right. And, Father, they would take a stand for the elderly and the impoverished and the, the orphans and the oppressed. And I pray, Father, that we would learn that our responsibility as men is to be godly men, and sometimes that's to take a stand that may not be the most popular stand at all. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. Now, I want you to know something, that God created you with the heart of a warrior. God created you with the heart of a warrior. Not to back up or not to fall down, but to stand up and say, here I stand. In fact, this metaphor for God of, of being a warrior is one of many metaphors that are used in Scripture. But I want you to understand something. It's hardwired within every man. It's hardwired within us to fight. It is hardwired within us to stand. It is hardwired within us to say, there's something that's right, there's something that's true, there's something that's pure, and I'm going to stand for that. Now, you may be thinking, well, as a Christian, I thought we were supposed to be full of love and mercy and tenderness and, and grace, and that's true, and Jesus was. But I want you to know something as well. That's an incomplete picture of Jesus. Jesus was a warrior. Jesus stood for what was right. He was the most loving person person who ever lived, but he was also the greatest warrior that ever lived. He stood for what was right. 
And we need to learn to stand for what's right. I mean, you think about it in the life of Jesus. He stood against the Pharisees. Remember there in Matthew's Gospel in chapter 23, 27, he said about the scribes and the Pharisees, you're hypocrites. You call someone a hypocrite to their face, you're taking a stand. It may be real unpopular. You're like whitewashed tombs. You're dead men's bones. You look good on the outside, but on the inside, nothing. He stood against the most powerful, elite, political, and religious force of the day, and he said, you're wrong. And also, Jesus cleansed the temple. You think about it. I mean, he went in to, at Passover, and he took a whip, and he ran everybody out of the temple. Do you think that was the act of a coward? That was the act of a man on a mission. That was the act of a warrior from Almighty God that said, you're making my house a den of thieves, and my father created to be a house of prayer. He also walked through a threatening crowd that was going to throw him over the hillside one day. And I, I, I just don't see Jesus turning and saying, Hey, guys, don't, don't do this, please. Don't, don't, I'm offended, but please just let me go. I think Jesus looked them in the eye and he said these words to them, Guys, it ain't happening today. Back off. And he walked through that threatening crowd. Jesus was a warrior. He was a man who stood his ground. I mean, you think about it. He fought the greatest battle that's ever been fought in John chapter 19 and verse 30. He went to the cross. He endured the, 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 the shame. And he said, it is finished. And he defeated death, hell, the grave, Satan, and sin. And he stood for what was right. He is a warrior. And Jesus one day is going to return. And he's not going to return as gentle Jesus, meek and mild, gentle Jesus, holy child, he's going to return as a man of war. And on him, you're going to see these words, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You know, you say, well, John, all this kind of unnerves me, all this talk of being a warrior and, and, and battle and warfare and all of these things. Well, I want you to know something, ladies. Jesus stood up for you. And there was a young lady who was caught in the very act of adultery in John chapter 8. And Jesus stood against those who wanted to stone her and he said to her I condemn you go and sin no more Jesus always stood for what was good what was pure and what was right and our responsibility is to do the very same thing my savior is full of grace and he is full of truth he is full of love and he is full of justice he's willing to turn the other cheek or he's willing to go toe to toe whatever is necessary at the time. So my question to you is this. Where have the warriors gone? Where are the men of God gone? Where are the men of honor and valor and integrity and character? Where have they gone? Where have they gone? Because it seems like that in a culture that we live in today that if you take a stand for anything that is true or right or pure or holy then you are narrow-minded, you're bigoted, and you're isolated, and you're basically, listen, stigmatized, criticized, and ostracized because you obviously are not in the enlightened group. Where have all of the warriors gone? Well, where have the men of God gone? In Exodus 20, verse 30, it said, Jesus, I, I, I mean, uh, the... Uh, the Old Testament talks about this, and it says, Likewise, you shall do with the oxen and sheep, it shall be with your mother seven days. On the eighth day, you shall give it to me. And actually, that's the wrong scripture. It's supposed to be Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse number 30. And it said that God went looking for a man who would stand in the gap. But here's what it said, I found none. I found not one single person who would stand in the gap. And I looked through that passage of Scripture in chapter 22 of Ezekiel, and I wrote these down just before service. Here's what was going on in the nation of Israel. There was a perversion of power. I don't know about you, but that sure sounds familiar today. The shedding of innocent blood, idolatry, violating God's laws, lack of hospitality, violating the Sabbath, loss of domestic discipline, uh, oppression of widows and orphans, profaning holy things, giving false witness, prostitution, accepting bribes, and last, forgetting God. If that's not modern America, I don't know what is. It's amazing how we have fallen. It's amazing what we accept 
any longer. And I'm telling you, we have to come to the place where we say, I won't be moved anymore. Where are all of the men? Where are guys, men who will fight and defend? God said, I didn't find a single one. Now, this statement's probably not going to gain widespread approval either here or on the internet. But I want you to know something. Our culture is attempting to turn men into women. You know the problem with that? Men don't make good women. We're, we're wired differently. We're, we're, we're not the same. I, Sandy and I, we're not even close to the same, and I am so glad that she is what she is. I mean, think about it with me, guys, for just a moment. You walk up to a friend who has a beautiful wife, and you say, how did an ignorant, ugly fellow like you get such a fox like her? And you go, I don't know, you know, just good luck. <laughs> but, but, listen to me, you say that, girls say that to one another, it doesn't work. They are offended by that. Us guys, we're wired differently. Or Sandy doesn't let me wash clothes. She'll let me fold them, but she will not let me. She said, you don't do it right. I don't know what's right. You know what? I can't even load the dishwasher. I tried it one time. She said, wrong, wrong, wrong. I mean, if you get them in there and they get clean, it looks like it's right, right, right to me. We are so different. We are different. Men and women are very different. Now, I want you to understand something. We, we need to understand what I am not talking about as well as what I am talking about. What I am not talking about is this. Some alpha male bully punk is not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the proverbial Archie Bunker type who has that meathead mentality. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about an MMA fighter like Conor McGregor that, that does those cowardly acts. I'm talking about real men who are real warriors who are fighting for the right things. That's what I'm talking about. I want you to understand something. There is a cause to fight for. There's a cause for you and I to stand up and fight. In, in fact, in Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 14, it said, I looked and arose, and I said to the nobles and leaders and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. I love that line. Do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. Listen, there is something bigger than you and I to fight for. It's not just about me, and it's not just about you. We need to fight for those things that are right. Fight for your home. Fight for your wife. Fight for your kids. Fight for truth. Be a real man. Be a godly man. Now, guys, listen to me. How many of you, from Thanksgiving, just before Thanksgiving, like two weeks before Thanksgiving, all the way through the new year, you have to watch movies with your wife besides me? Anybody besides me willing to? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Those Hallmark, Lifetime, all those things. Listen, you know what? There are two kinds of movies, guys. Chick flicks and movies. <laughs> I'm a movie sort of guy. But, you know, during that period of time, I can't tell you how many chick flicks that I watch, but I cannot wait until the first of the year gets here because I'll go to Netflix and I'll pull up something like Rocky, <laughs> Gladiator, or Braveheart, something that makes me feel like a man again because I need that. And I, I look at, I look at uh, Mel Gibson in Braveheart, and when he's pray, playing that warrior and he paints his face blue, you know what I'm talking about? And he said, listen, how many of you would trade all of these days for just one day to come back and tell our enemies they may take our lives, but they will never take our freedom? How many of you remember that? Hey, that was good stuff. And it just makes you want to get up and fight. Listen, there's a cause to fight for, men. There's something to stand for. First Samuel 17, 29. I love what David said. He asked his brother Eliab. He said, is there not a cause? Is there nothing to fight for? Why are we here? And that story, that, that passage of Scripture is in the story of Goliath in Israel in the standoff. Listen, is there no reason to stand? Is there not a cause? 
What do you need to fight for? Your marriage? Your children? What do you need to fight for? Your home? Financial survival? Truth? What do you need to fight for? The Word of God? You see... People are fighting all kinds of things. Some people may be fighting addictions in here that's destroying you, and you're allowing it to destroy you, and you're not fighting the good fight. You need to find something worth fighting for and take a stand and say, I will not back up. I love the story. My favorite, favorite, even though he's from the University of Tennessee, my favorite football story of all times is George Cafago. George Cafago, two-time All-American for the University of Tennessee. He went to play professional football for Brooklyn. And when he got to Brooklyn, uh, he was just an average sort of football player. wasn't an All-American, wasn't, wasn't a Pro Bowl player. Uh, he served in World War II. But what was so interesting about this one story about George Cafago is raining like it has been today. Field was muddy, nasty. Look up on the clock, and they actually had a clock that had a second hand and that second hand and minute hand went around, and that told the time on the field. And, and it was coming down. It was the halftime was coming down, and, and they were giving the ball George Cafago to the right for three yards, George Cafago to the left for four yards. Just continued blast up the middle. George Cafago right, George Cafago left. They were making it all the way down to the goal line, three yards out, and the clock is ticking down. They center the ball. George Cafago receives it. He runs through the line. He's hit on both sides behind the line of scrimmage. He keeps moving forward. He's hit again by two guys. He continues falling forward, hit by another guy as he falls over the goal line for a touchdown, and they shot, actually shot a gun off to indicate the end of the half, and it was said in the stands by someone, my soul, they had to shoot him to stop him. <laughs> Wouldn't it be good if we were at that place in our life? where we were so dedicated, so committed, that they'd have to say, my soul, they had to shoot him to stop him. Wouldn't that be great if we believed something that strongly? Now listen, there's a cause to fight for. But I want you to understand something else. Without a cause, men, without a cause, a warrior will fight against the wrong things. You'll fight against the wrong things. You'll fight everything you shouldn't fight. I think of the Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 8 and verse 3. Paul, who was Saul at the time, he was fighting against the church that he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women and committing them to prison. Now listen. I want to say something here. I want you to hear it, ladies. Maybe you've experienced the strength of a man in a bad way. Well, I want to share something with you. Any man that will hurt a woman, a child, the elderly, or those that are infirmed or weaker is nothing but a coward and a bully. Amen. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about men who will take a stand and love their families and love truth and love Right, there is never, ever, ever any excuse for a violent man. And sir, if you're here today and you're a violent man, shame on you. You're a coward and you're a punk. You need to grow up and be a man. Now listen to me. There is something within us that says we should fight for right. If you don't have a cause, here's what you end up doing. You fight against all of the wrong things. You fight for all of the wrong things. I mean, you'll fight your boss. You'll fight your wife. You'll fight your neighbor. You'll, you'll fight everything that's wrong. Now, Samson is a prime example of someone who fought all of the wrong battles. But, you know, amazingly, at the end of his life, he got it right, thankfully, but it took him all of his life. And I told Sandy uh, just a little bit earlier, I said, thank you for changing my hair color when you put my picture up there. So the question is this, how do we stand and fight? How do we fight? How do we fight? There's two ways I think we fight. Sometimes, like Samson, you throw a punch. And in Judges chapter 16, there's a line in that passage of Scripture. He says these words. You can read it all, but he said these words. He called to the Lord and said, Oh, Lord, God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray just this once. Just one more time, strengthen me, strengthen me. You see, finally, Samson 
Finally, Samson did what he was born to do. You know what he was born to do? Protect the nation of Israel. And finally, that's what he did. Before, it was all about him. He was fighting for what he wanted, not what God wanted. And I'm going to tell you, as long as we're doing that, we're missing the mark in a horrible way. You know, unfortunately, Samson, he died in his final battle. But really, what God wants is not us to fight one time and die. He wants us to die daily to ourselves that we might live for him. And as we live for him daily, then we can make a prolonged difference for his kingdom. So what do you need to fight for, men? I I don't know what it is. First, you need to fight to be a man of God. Then you need to fight for your family. Then you need to fight for your faith. Then you need to fight for your church. Then you need to fight for your community, for your nation. You need to fight for the poor. You need to fight for the hurting. You need to fight for the oppressed. You need to fight for those who cannot help themselves. You need to take a stand because many people can't stand for themselves. And you know something, man? I want you to hear this. The reason so many people, so many men feel so empty and they try to fill it with everything from... from, from, horseshoes to golf to fishing to hunting to camping we try to fill this this void with everything imaginable because we try to find hope in our passion that will give us peace inside but it doesn't ever work and i want to i want to say listen to me don't just use your passions for yourself throw a punch for a cause Stand up for truth. Stand up for right. Listen, do it. Stand up for your home, for your family, for someone else that's struggling, for someone that's needing, for serving in the church, for making a difference, for going on a mission trip, for visiting the elderly, going to the nursing home, going to the hospital, going to the shut-ins. Throw a punch. Do something actively. Dig a well. Send money to dig a well in a third world country where they don't have clean drinking water. Do something. Do something. Don't just spend it all on yourself. But There's a second thing. You know, not only are we to do these things, but sometimes we're to turn the other cheek. We're to turn the cheek. Now, remember Jesus in the garden just prior to going and being beaten and mistrials and these unjust trials that he went through and, and uh, the crucifixion that he experienced. Remember what Jesus did in the garden when, when the, the Roman soldiers come? You know, what, what does Peter do? Peter reaches in, grabs the sword, and lops off Malchus' ear. Now, he wasn't trying to cut off an ear. He was trying to cut off a head. But he had bad aim. But Jesus healed that man's ear. And then you know what Jesus did? Here comes Judas. And you know what Jesus did? He turned the cheek. Because Jesus knew it wasn't time to throw a punch. It was time to turn the cheek. Now, I want you to hear this. Many people have never got that right. Everything is a reason to fight. It's a reason to fight. But you know what? Listen to me. Listen closely. The greatest show of strength is even when you're right to turn a cheek. Now, what do I mean by that? Some people only know there's only one weapon, and that's to fight. Verbally, physically, emotionally, however. But the question is, how do you turn a cheek? Sometimes it means you say, I'm sorry. Sometimes it means you say, forgive me. Sometimes, men and women, it means telling your family, Get out of bed, we're going to church today. In Joshua 24, 15, I love that passage of Scripture. It's for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Listen, men, you're only as strong as you are honest. So I'm going to ask you to be real honest for just a moment. And here's the question, two of them. What is the battle you must win? What's the battle you must win? What, 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 what battle do you need to win? And then what, listen, is the fight that you must fight. Those two. And, and I don't know what it is. Maybe it's for your marriage. Maybe it's for your children. Maybe it's to overcome anger. Maybe, maybe you just have this uh, feeling of insecurity. Now, ladies, you too. Maybe it's your children. Is it spiritual? You just need to lead your family. What is it? What are you going to do about it? Are you going to take a stand? Will you stand in the gap? Will you be a man of God? Will you stand for what's true and right? Will you make a difference? Will you be a real man? 
I love D.L. Moody. D.L. Moody was an uneducated preacher of the gospel. In, in Chicago, Illinois, there is Moody Memorial Church to this day. There's Moody Press, Moody Bible College, and they send out more missionaries than almost anyone in the world. Still. He died in 1899. So here it is 120 years later, and he's still making an impact. But here's what I want you to get. D.L. Moody was told, it's never been seen what one man wholly sold out to the Lord can do. And D.L. Moody said, after he thought about it, he said, I'll be that man. And you know what? He shook two continents for Christ, and he's still making an impact today. So some of us and some of you are older than me, obviously. But I don't know about you, but just nod your head and agree with this truth. With age, do you reflect more? You reflect more about life. I do too. I reflect a whole lot more. And maybe uh, as you reflect, maybe you see your life in this poem called Sometimes. And it's on the board, and it says these words, Across the fields of yesterday, he sometimes comes to me. A little ba lad just back from play, the lad I used to be. And yet he smiles so wistfully when once he crept within. I wonder if he hopes to see the man I might have been. Men, are you who you want it to be? Are you who you thought you would be? Fair question, I think, don't you? Do you sometimes look back and lament? Well, here's what I want you to hear. You may be old, but you ain't dead yet. So today, take a stand, throw a punch, turn a cheek, be the man that you ought to be. The man that you want to be. The man that you should be. Would you do that today? I'm going to ask you to do that. And ladies, I'm not leaving you out. Because I'm sure some of you look back over life too and you reflect and you say, boy, I missed the boat there. I blew that. God's looking for people to stand in the gap and make a difference. Love people. Help others. Stand for truth. Would you be that person? If you've never come to Jesus, I'm going to ask you to come to Christ today because there's a lot of innocent bloodshed, a lot of dishonest things being said, a lot of laws that are being broken of God, a lot of horrible moral failures in our nation and maybe in your life. What about it? We want revival in our church, our nation, our world. It starts with us. So would you bow with me? Father in heaven, I do pray. I pray that we would quit fighting against all of the wrong things and would begin to fight against the right things. I pray, Father, that we might know your truth, we might make a difference in your world, and, Father, we might love others, and we might exalt you. And when we do throw a punch or turn a cheek, Father, we would tell others, the reason I did that is because of my Heavenly Father. And, Father, I pray that others would be drawn to that, and I pray today for your will. I pray that you would just divinely direct our lives to honor your son. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand and come as you have needs. Lord, I come, I confess. Bowing here, I find my rest. 
without you I fall apart you're the one that guides my heart Lord I need you oh I need you every hour I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God how I need you where sin runs deep your grace is more where grace is found is where you are and where you are Lord I am free holiness is Christ in me Lord I need you oh I need you every hour I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God how I need you so teach my song to rise to you when temptation comes my way and when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay Lord I need you oh I need you every hour I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God how I need you that line is so true oh God how I need you I pray that you would realize that and I pray that you would embrace that today as you leave this place give thanks Give thanks that God has given us another day to make a difference. Let's do that. Come back tonight for the Lord's Supper. Uh, you can beat uh, probably all those from the other churches to uh, your lunch place today. So I'll let you out, Earth. You should be giving praise for that. David Thomas dismisses. Heavenly Father, we love you so much. We're so grateful to have you as our Lord and Savior. We do pray, Father, that we can be warriors for you and just continue to stand and fight for you, Father, and spread your gospel. We just love and praise you and ask that you'd be with us as we leave here and bring us back safely together as a congregation. Forgive us of our failures. In Jesus' name we pray.